Prayer is our way of opening ourselves, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our very lives to the transformative power of His grace. Jesus went out to serve those who were marginalized and on the edges of society. And so that's also what we're called to do. For some of the women that have come here, this is one of the first chances they've felt safe enough to sleep through the night. Well, faith was always a very important part of both of our lives growing up, so we wanted to share that with our own children. Before they'd go to school, we'd say a prayer that everyone would have a good day. We always prayed before meals, and, and then of course at nighttime when we'd go to bed, Jim would always read from the Bible to the children. And you like to keep that channel of communication open as, as you go through the day and, and you hit some of the rough spots in the day. It's nice to let him know what, uh, what, what's going on in your life and, and have him help you do what he would like us to do as, as we try to live a Christian life. Now, at this point in my life, as I look back, I realize what an important foundation that laid. You know, spending that time in prayer allowed my mind, my heart, my soul to think about the idea, the gift of a vocation to the priesthood, and ultimately gave me the courage to pursue it. The thing is, God has a plan for all of our lives, right? Which unfolds as we grow in faith and hope and in charity. No matter what one's vocation is, pursuing that in prayer and looking out for the gift of God's peace is what can really help one to grow in that vocation. Some of the nights and some of the days are brutal, and I, I think to myself, you know what, I could be so comfortable right now, um, so why am I pushing myself so hard when so many other people can live comfortably and they, they look happy while they're doing it? But the greatest reason to do service is it's because it's not about you. Jesus went out to serve those who were marginalized and on the edges of society. And so that's also what we're called to do. We should go out to help those who are in need to be Christ to them, whether that's through our actions or through what we say. It's chasing that example that Christ led for us, to lay our lives down for a friend, right? It's an outward expression of our inward faith. We live in a culture that says, do the best that you can for yourself. And when we decide to turn that around and flip it and say, let's do the best we can for other people, it enables you to have a servant in heart. That love for Jesus and God just overflows in my heart and overflows into what I do. I can't keep this to myself. I've got to like share it with others. It's a great blessing that, that CSA, the Catholic Student Association, offers this. I think of those nights where we do service and I'm exhausted, but your head hits the pillow and you think, I'm exhausted and I'm grateful for this opportunity. The women that come to Miriam House, they usually have a lot of trauma in their background and they need stable housing. I got here when I was seven months pregnant and I had been homeless for so long that um, it, you don't really know how to get out of that situation sometimes when you're in it. And um, a lot of the shelters aren't places that you want to be. For some of the women that have come here, this is one of the first chances they've felt safe enough to sleep through the night. The Miriam House is such a, it's such a gem because of the setting and where we're at, being an organization of Catholic Charities, we're able to actually wrap around them and individualize their plans. I actually cried my first night in my apartment. I was just so overwhelmed with, um, with all the help that I had received. I really think this is a sacred place. I mean, to watch residents transition is amazing. And it does give you the hope that that's possible. I never had hope like this before, and I just knew that it would take me and my baby really far, and I was really grateful for that. Dear friends, what a powerful witness we just heard from folks of our own diocese who benefit from our annual Catholic appeal and do prayer, do service, and do gratitude every day of their lives. As you know, our diocesan shared ministries 
rely each year upon your financial support and prayers for their day-to-day -day operations. Our Clergy Consecrated Life and Vocations Department, our Discipleship and Family Life Ministries, our Catholic Charities Programs, our Catholic Education and Cathedral Liturgies simply would not happen without your direct charity and involvement. I encourage you to make a gift to this year's annual Catholic Appeal and to be as generous as you can. Together, let's not only meet, but exceed our goal. Our ministries depend on it. Your support is greatly appreciated, as are all the ways which you do prayer, do service, and do gratitude. May God bless you for your goodness.